Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Tayagara, and I welcome you back to another episode of Oot 3D 3 Heart Run! In the last episode, we finally beat the dreaded Water Temple, and awakened the Water Sage who turned out to be our childhood fiancé, Rupo. This time, we're going to be doing a bit of side questing, starting with, of course, a gold Skulltula right here. But afterwards, we're going to return to Lon Lon Ranch to do a little mini-game that we can do. And we're also going to go to Kakariko Village and Dodongo's Cavern on our way to the Fire Temple just to pick up some few- uh, just to pick up a few things. Anyway, what you want to do here is hookshot and make sure you land on the branch. And then you want to back up, of course. Shoot the Skulltula once, then twice, and now the token's all yours. Let's see if we can jump into the- we're probably not going to land on the water from here, but what if we go from this angle? Wait, jump slash? Nope. Oh, I tried. Anyway, we're gonna backflip into the lake, and I'll meet you guys by the shore. Sound good? Oh, there we have another one of those tech tights, but let's just ignore them for now. I'm gonna go up to these blades of grass here and hopefully get a uh, recovery heart, because I took a bit of damage in the Morpha fight, and also, you know, from the fall damage after jumping off that tree. Uh, no luck so far, just rupees, magic bottles, arrows. What this patch of grass, you got any for me? There we go, that's what I want to see. Alright. Now I know I normally cut out myself traversing across Hyrule Field, but since we haven't really been to this part of Hyrule Field that much, I'm gonna show it off, and we're also gonna be riding a Pona on horseback. So I want to show off some more of that. We're also gonna come across my least favorite enemy in the game, being one of the ten big Poes. Oh, as you can see here, there's a malicious looking ring around Deathfire, but don't you- uh, around Death Mountain, excuse me, Deathfire. Wow, that sounds like the name of a metal band or something. Uh, but I digress. We're gonna be doing something about that in the next few episodes. For now, we're just gonna be playing Axie Axie to call over Epona. And then we're gonna do a little fun mini game over at Lon Lon Ranch. But anyway, guys, aside from that, the plan for Kakariko Village is to visit one of the shooting galleries that recently opened up. If you remember from episode 3, actually, that's when we went to the shooting gallery. And then we're also going to wake up Talon, who is fast asleep in someone's house right now, and tell him it's okay to return to the ranch. Then we're going to go up to um, the Dorongo's Cavern to collect a few gold Skulltulas that we couldn't get, actually, back at, in the childhood timeline. Well, we could get a few of them, but I just passed on them for now because I knew I'd be coming back as an adult. And then, yeah, we'll finally make our way up Death Mountain to Boron City to see what's become of them in the seven years since Ganondorf took over. But as you can see, there are no more dark clouds surrounding Lon Lon Ranch, so that's a pretty good sign. Right on inside, and here we have Ingo, back in his Luigi Fire Luigi outfit from the childhood timeline. Hi there, how are you? I am Ingo. I feel so honored to be allowed to work here. Yes, he uh, he's had a certain change of heart since we beat his ass in the race and took a Pona from him. But let's talk to Malon here and see what Justice. Oh my goodness, it happened again! Oh, this looks so funny, guys. Oh my god. Thank you very much for the other day. I haven't even asked you your name yet. Really? Link? That's what I thought. You're the fairy boy from the forest. That was years ago. Do you remember me? You do? I was sure it was you because Epona remembered you. Oh, I have to tell you about Mr. Ingo. If you could just put Epona's front hooves down there so I feel like you won't be crushing me anytime soon. He was afraid that the evil king might find out that Epona had been taken away. It really upset him. But one day, all of a sudden, he went back to being a normal, nice person. I can't believe it, but peace is returning to this ranch. It's all because of you. I owe you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Link. All right, let's talk to her again. Epona looks great. It looks like you were able to tame her too, and thank you for putting her down there. How about trying your skill with Epona on an obstacle course? I'll time you for two laps. It's pretty challenging. If you miss jumping a fence in the proper order, you'll fail! How about it? Do you want to try? Yeah, let's -a go. The current record is 50 seconds. First try to beat this record. If you can beat the record, I'll give you a present. Give it your best shot, okay? Alright, let's get started. I don't normally do this in a regular playthrough of Boot. I think I only ever did it once or twice in my previous 100% playthroughs. But yes, yeah, since this is a 100% Let's Play, we're gonna be showing it off. Anyway, we don't need to use the carrots to jump over these mini fences here, just the big ones. But of course, uh, traversing the branch takes about 25 seconds or so, so for now we're just gonna see if we can make it without expending all of our resources, of course. Replenishing the carrots here, very nice, jumping over the fence. Alright, let's expend a few just to be on a good pace here. 26 going over, we need to pick up the pace just a little bit. Nope. 
Alright. A few more, this should be fine. Yeah, we're gonna get plenty here. One, two, three. Okay, I think we're on a good pace here, guys. As I was saying, though, I normally don't do this part. It's a little... It is pretty... Ch oh, I took a wide turn. That's bad. Come on. Come on. Yes! 49 seconds. Okay. Thank God. I thought I was gonna fail that. <laughs> but yeah, the reward for this is pretty funny. You did it! 49 seconds is a new course record! I have to give you a new present to commemorate your new record. The present is a uh, little too heavy to give to you here. We'll have it delivered to your house. But you can't wait to see it. <laughs> oh, don't worry, guys. I'll show that off soon. But for now, this is everything we could do in Lon Lon Ranch. So we're going to make our way back to Kakariko Village. Oh, we're going to stop awkwardly there. Anyway, I will meet you guys there. Sound good? Awesome. Oh, or not, we're just going to stop here. But there's something I actually want to bring a bit of attention to. Notice how the dark clouds formed above Kakariko Village here as we entered, and remember how I said before that there are no longer dark clouds above Kakariko Village- or above Lon Lon Ranch? I guess it's because we broke the curse by freeing Epona. And uh, notice how Malon said Ingo randomly started acting like a nice person again? Maybe he was under Ganondorf's evil influence, but by freeing Epona, who seems to be some kind of magical horse, we broke that curse and now he's free. But anyway, here we have Talon, the rightful owner of Lon Lon Ranch, fast asleep in a stranger's house. Malon, doing alright. Sorry to make you worry. But of course, we'll be able to wake him up. Not right now, though we don't have the proper tool for it. If you remember as a child, we woke him up using a Kuko. But I just thought I'd show you for now what he's up to. In the meantime, we're gonna make our way on over here to the newly opened Akariko Shooting Gallery, which, if you remember, during the child timeline was still under construction. And those construction workers were just dancing around all across Kakariko Village. But within seven years, they finally finished. Here we have this guy once again. So yeah, we'll play with you. 20 rupees for play. Okay, this game is a game for grown-ups. This is Hyrule's famous shooting gallery. Take aim at the targets from the platform over there. Can you hit 10 targets? You get 15 shots. Draw your weapon with B. Are you ready? Go for a perfect score. Good luck. All right, so it's more or less the same as when we were a kid, just a little more challenging. Different order of rupees, too. Starting out with the red ones first. I appreciate that. All right, we're going to get the blue. Also, notice how the bow and arrow is a lot more precise in the slingshot. Fires a lot faster, too, which is awesome. Big fan of that. Okay, just the regular green. I assume next is gonna be this one. Yep. Oh, nice! All right, perfect first try. Wonderful, bravo, perfect. Here's a fantastic present. All right, we got the big quiver. Now we can carry up to 40 arrows in total, which is a really nice upgrade. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do we get the even bigger one? I mean, I don't think we can, you know, just shoot some more bullseyes in Kakariko or inside of the Lost Woods there, and you'd be right. But, unfortunately, we cannot be getting the bigger quiver anytime soon. That'll be a couple episodes down the line. For now, I'm just going to roll into these crates here. There's someone just patting down the grass over there for some reason. The, the shop has opened up here since, you know, Castletown's been desecrated. I'm going to ignore Navi, of course. Climb up Death Mountain Trail. There are the red tech types we fought as children. Let's just... Slash him once and he's dead. We don't even need to jump slash because the Master Sword obviously is much more powerful than the Kukiri Sword. Now here we have a derivative boulder from Indiana Jones just spawning out of thin air there. And yes, I do believe they can actually kill enemies if they're in their range of fire, so keep that in mind. Without further ado, we're just going to return back to Dodongo's Cavern here, which as you can see, the boulders are making their way into. So that one just keeps rolling and rolling until we enter and it stops for game loading purposes. The first thing we're going to do is make our way to the right of the cavern, because there was um, a bombable wall there that we couldn't do anything about as a child. I'm going to dodge the Beemos for now. Not going to bother waiting for that platform to come back down, so we're just going to run over here, climb up this ladder. As you can see, this area is a lot easier to traverse as an adult. Like, we could previously not hop up onto this ledge as a kid, but now as an adult... Awesome. Alright, let's keep moving forward now the room with the Dodongos. I'm gonna ignore them. They've all respawned, as you can see. I don't think that has anything to do with Ganondorf's evil influence. I just think it's the fact that this area is called Dodongo's Caverns. These guys just simply reclaim their home from the Gorons. Once again, as I mentioned before, there's a business scrub behind that wall, so I, I really don't care to engage with that. There are only a certain business scrubs in this game that deserve my business because I need their, you know, item upgrades. That's, that's all they're good for, in my opinion. 
We're gonna make our way in here, steal some peace. Rupees, very nice. I'm gonna be needing a bomb in a second, so I'm just gonna just grab that real quick. All right, through the door now. Oh, yeah, Link looked very concerned there for a second. Here we have some baby Dodongos. Ignore them. All right, make our way on over to this bombable wall here. Drop one down. Then, for now, we gotta move a little. Where's Navi? There, okay. Notice how she flies away and turns green? Well, this time we're actually not gonna be playing the Song of Time. We're gonna be playing a different song. A song from an entirely different Zelda game, actually. Take care of the baby Dodongos first, of course. There we go. All right, now we're gonna back up a little because I don't want to get caught by the explosion. But yeah, we're gonna whip out Eel Ocarina once more and play the Scarecrow song. Or the Song of Healing, rather, but you catch my drift. With the most immaculate timing in the world. But as you can see, there's Pierre. He spawns up by that gold Skulltula because his friend told us that he would help Pierre to look out for us and he would spawn whenever we played the song. But yes, there's our next gold Skulltula. And we're about to grab another one here. And it's not a two-for-one special, it's actually a three-for-one special, because there's another one that we can grab. But for now, we're just gonna have to kill all the keys in one fell swoop. That was awesome, guys. Anyway, we're just gonna make our way out this door here, and onto the left side of the cavern from the central room. We can exit out here, the baby Dodongos have respawned. And Pierre's just gonna chill out here until we need him in the next fire-themed dungeon. Spoiler alert. Oh boy. Okay, and that... Did not go according to plan, but I'm very grateful I didn't get hit there. I'm gonna make our way on through here. And, yes, to the left side of the room now. You know that big staircase that we lowered by setting off that giant chain reaction of palm flowers going off? Well, that's where we want to go again. Because if you remember, there was actually a gold Skulltula that was just out of reach there as a kid. I said we could get it if we had a ranged weapon. Now, sadly, I didn't bother going back with the boomerang because I just felt it was a little too out of the way. So I figured, hey, while I'm making my way up the Dongu or while I'm making my way up Death Mountain, I might as well go back for it now. But alas, we're gonna see that same cutscene again of the stairs coming down for us. And we're gonna do the same thing we did as a kid. You know, just backflip up the stairs because it looks cooler and it's honestly faster than um going up the normal way. So let's just turn around here and just go up the stairs. We should be able to reach the Skulltula from here. A little more forward, like so, using the hookshot. And there we go, our next token. All right, I will see you guys by the entrance to Goron City now, where we will continue onwards. Slight change of plans, I figured I'd actually show the climb up Death Mountain, since as you can see, there are a bunch of giant red boulders here that weren't previously there. And I also just thought I'd show off, you know, the change of environment aside from that, such as even more rolling, rolling boulders coming down. And I believe we didn't actually claim that treasure chest from before. So we can go ahead and nab that real quick, since we actually have the space in our wallet. As I said many, many episodes back, this is a purple rupee, of course, that's worth 50. This is gonna keep moving onward here. And Boron City is just ahead. Let's see if we can actually open up the grotto here. To be completely honest with you, I can't remember if it's the Song of Storms or a bomb that opens it up. So, oh, like it's a Song of Storms. Okay. Just a little treasure chest in here. And of course, a few beehives that we can take care of. Here we have a huge rupee worth 200. I just totally wasted that. Weird. Unfortunate. And as you can see in the beehives, there's a red rupee. And... I only got seven of the 200 rupees from that big yellow rupee. I am a little upset about that, but it is what it is. No point in crying over spilt milk. We just want to make our way over here. Goron City seems a little deserted, save for that one little Goron just rolling around there. Don't worry, we're gonna talk to him in a second. Just for now, I want to grab the uh, Skulltula token, of course. And we can hook shot up onto here, I believe. See if we can grab the ledge. On Link. Let's do it. Nope, I was wrong. Thankfully, we somehow did not take fall damage from that. But without further ado, we're just gonna make our way on up to the second floor and stop that Goron from rolling around. See if he can tell us why Goron City is so deserted. Maybe even give us a new colored tunic, maybe, hypothetically. That would be pretty cool. Seems to have taken the place of the previous hot rodder Goron who was making the rounds around here. You know, gave us our bomb bag upgrade. Oh, he's going the other way. Okay. 
gonna have to go and meet him out in the open. I guess he's claustrophobic, much like myself. Not a fan of those cramped spaces. How about you guys? Let me know in the comments. Are you claustrophobic? Do you not do well with tight spaces? I know it's not the most uncommon. Oh, we got him. All right. How could you do this to me? You, your Ganondorf servant. Hear my name and tremble. I am Link, hero of the Gorons. Bruh, my name's Link. Imposter? What? Your name is also Link? Then you must be the legendary Dodongo Buster and hero Link. My dad is Darunia. You remember him? Dad named me Link after you because you're so brave. Aww, that's actually really sweet. Sorry, I knew that happened, but just really thinking about it, just it's it's really sweet, actually. Like, could you imagine having or someone respecting you so much that they named their firstborn child after you? That has got to be an honor of the highest caliber. I guess I just didn't really think about that much as a kid when I first played this game, but I'm getting sidetracked. It's a cool name. I really like it. Link, you're a hero to us Gorons. I'm so glad to meet you. Please give me your autograph. Sign it to my friend, Link of the Gorons. Oh, I, I guess it's not a good time to ask you this. Please help everyone. My dad Darunia went to the fire temple. A dragon is inside. If we don't hurry up, even my dad will be eaten by the dragon. Ooh -hoo -hoo. All right, let's see if we can calm him down. Let's ask about the dragon. A long time ago, there was an evil dragon named Fulvagia living in this mountain. The dragon was very scary. It ate Gorons. Using a huge hammer, the hero of the Gorons, boom, destroyed it just like that. This is a myth from long ago, but it's true. I know because my dad is a descendant of the hero. Oh, you better try to calm. Okay. Let's ask about the Gorons next. Everybody was taken to the fire temple. While my dad was out, Ganondorf's followers came and took them all away. All of them will be eaten by Volvagia. Dad said that Ganondorf had revived Volvagia. As a warning to those who might oppose him, Ganondorf is going to feed them all to Volvagia. Dad went to the fire temple all by himself to try to save everyone. Please help, Link. I'll give you this heat-resistant tunic. All right, we've got the Goron tunic after learning that Ganondorf is planning to commit genocide on the Gorons. Jeez. Okay, so this heat-resistant tunic is adult size, so it won't fit a kid. Going to a hot place? No worries. That's right, if you come here to Canada in the summer, you will be all set. Because contrary to the stereotypes, Canada gets really, really, really hot, especially during the summer. Like, oh my god. For the longest time, my house, I mean, I still don't have central air conditioning where I live, right? I just got one of those little air con uh, window air conditioners, and even then, it's just not enough. Like, it cools my room, and it's done a better job than previous air conditioners, but it just gets really hot in here. And as I said before, a couple episodes back, I recently finished up my job as a youth summer camp counselor. And as fun as it was, I just hated the heat. It was miserable out, and I just, ugh, not a good time. Got a lot of sunburn. But anyway, what you're meant to do here is to go to Darunia's room. Pull back that giant statue, because Link is just that strong, apparently. Here we are in Death Mountain Crater. You remember, we came here as a kid to get that one gold Skultula, and then in that little alcove over there, as I mentioned before, is a piece of heart. But now we can finally traverse without dying of heat stroke, which is really nice. So what you want to do is hookshot onto this bridge over here, make your way forward, and it's our old friend Sheik doing the superhero landing. It's something that grows over time. True friendship, a feeling in the heart that becomes even stronger over time. The passion of friendship will soon blossom into a righteous power, and through it you will know which way to go. This song is dedicated to the power of the heart. Listen to the Bolero of Fire. God, I just love Lincoln Cheeks duet so much. Earl Earl Your Your. Let's do it, guys. Earl Earl Your Your. Let's go! My turn. Ooh, that was pretty fast. Fast love this song. You have learned the Bolero of Fire. Think. I'll see you again. And she just randomly causes some flames to appear on the bridge there as she backs up. Of course, gonna blind us with her flash grenade. And we're gone. Straight ahead to the left there is the entrance to the fire temple. Now, of course, we will be heading on inside in the next episode of Oot 3D 3 Heart Run. But 
before we even go over there, we're not quite done yet. I just want to show something off really quick. We're going to make our way back to the forest real quick. Because, as Malon said, there is a big heavy prize waiting for us in our house. So why don't I meet you guys at Kokiri Forest, where we will see what is waiting for us. Sound good? Cool. Here we are back in Kokiri Forest, and as we said before in the last time we were here, um, all the monsters are gone, even at night, which is really nice. Oh, this guy's no longer picking up boulders for my, uh, Ido. Let's see what he has to say. Teach me some fancy fencing. All I've ever done is tap B all my life. All right, well, not here because there are stones in the way, but you know what? Maybe another time. For now, since the very first episode, this will be our first time returning to our childhood home. And as you can see, the Sheikah stone to our right there is just going crazy. It's probably very happy to see us. Also, I just walked into the wall like an idiot. Now here, we have our prize, a cow. I guess you could say our house has become a- Cow house? Yeah, where they live. The cows. Anyway, um, of course, much like all the other cows in the alcove, the main purpose of this guy is to provide us with Lon Lon Milk by playing a Pona song for him. But we're not going to do that just now. And also, as Sheik said before, when we return to the Temple of Time, if we lay in our childhood bed, we can rest here and recover health, but not only that, we can also do like a bit of a boss rush. Well, not by doing that. That's how you, you know, replenish your health and such. But going to relive a battle, and every boss you've beaten up to this point in the game is available for a rematch if you so choose to fight them. As you can see, there's a gap between Phantom Ganon and Morpha because you are intended to go to the Fire Temple first, but I didn't feel like it. Anyway, that's all for now. I just thought I'd show it off. In the next episode of Oot 3D Three Heart Run, we are going to make our way back to Death Mountain Crater and begin our adventure through the Fire Temple. Till then, guys, my name's been Tayagara. I thank you all so much for watching. This is my cow, Jesse, and we bid you guys farewell.